Hello everyone, Random Canuck here. Okay, so we have more uh, w or NHL trades uh, to talk about tonight. Uh, I'm going to not try and drag out this video too long because I've had a pretty long day and I'm kind of tired. Um, so I'm kind of going to do, what I'm kind of going to do during leading up to the deadline is do these little videos at the end of the day. Um, again, I don't know about Friday the actual deadline just because of my work schedule, but we will see. And depending on how many trades and how whatever, uh, my last video was more so meaning I'm just not doing one big video on that day because my original plan was to do a live stream, but obviously I can't do that with me working. So uh, that's how it's going to go. All right, so we're going to start off with the big trade. Uh, another one, um, another big name off the board, a name that has been rumored now for the last two years. So I'm glad it's finally over and done with. And that is Jacob Chikrin. Uh, going from the Arizona Coyotes to the Ottawa Senators. And I got to say, I don't get this. Um, I don't understand Ottawa. Um, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. They, quite frankly, I think, well, I don't know what they sh should be selling, but I mean, I just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't think Chikrin's a good fit in Ottawa. I don't. I, I think, Either he must have really wanted out badly or Arizona just really wanted to get rid of him. So Chikrin defenseman goes from Arizona to Ottawa for a 2023 conditional first round pick. It's top five protected. It shifts to 2024 should the Ottawa Senators win the lottery in the Bedard sweepstakes. Uh, they get a 2024 conditional second round pick, a 2024 first uh, top 10 protected if Otto, if Ottawa in 2023 goes to the Eastern Conference Final, um, yeah, right, uh, it slides to a 2025 unprotected uh, first. So uh, a lot of teams have these like protected clauses for this year's draft, which I mean, it makes sense, especially if you have a chance to get Connor Bedard. And the other thing Arizona gets is a 2026 second round pick. Uh, so... All draft picks, no players. Um, obviously, Arizona does not want to take on any more money or players or anything like that because, let's be honest, they're trying to tank too and get Bedard as well. So, Chikrin on his way to Ottawa from, from Arizona, and that saga is finally over and done with, like the Patrick Kane one. Um, I just don't... Ottawa was a team I was not thinking. I mean, I heard about him in the rumors, but I still just could not understand why... Um, Ottawa would do that, but oh well. Um, another team involving the Arizona Coyote, or another trade involving the Arizona Coyotes is Shane Gostaspair going to the Carolina Hurricanes. I love this deal for Carolina. Carolina could be a really interesting team in the playoffs, especially if they have to face the New York Rangers in the in the second round. Um, if either team gets past the first, which they should, um, Arizona receives a 2026 third round pick. For, for Goss to spare. And I think the Flyers too get some sort of conditional thing now that uh, because Arizona took on that contract from them. So uh, what that is, I, I forget. But uh, yeah, Carolina boosting their defense by getting Shane Goss to spare from the Arizona Coyotes. I really like that move. This trade, however, again, another Vancouver. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, I, I swear, like I really hope I'll say this right now. I hope Connor Bedard does not end up in the van on the Vancouver Canucks because their owner is absolutely ruining their franchise. Like he just does, the French Francesco Aquilini does not know hockey. He does not. He doesn't know a damn thing about it. Um, Vancouver trades their twenty twenty three first round pick they got from the New York Islanders in the Bo Horvat trade, which I know is probably going to be a lower one and not Carter Bedard related, but still, Vancouver needs to rebuild. Stop, like stop pretending you're any good. Um, they get Philip Hornick and a twenty twenty three fourth round pick from Detroit, and they also get Vancouver's twenty twenty three second round pick, like. Steve Eiserman absolutely fleeces the Vancouver Canucks. Like, I just, I don't get it with Vancouver this year. Like, this makes this makes absolutely no sense. And I believe Philip Hornick is a UFA after this year. So what if Philip Hornick really doesn't like his experience in Vancouver, leaves, and Vancouver's got nothing after that? Like, this, uh, this is a stupid trade by the Vancouver Canucks, in my opinion. 
they got to just keep their first round picks and just lock up Francesco Aquilini in a closet somewhere and just, you know, just stop letting him just dictate this freaking team. Because I'll tell you, the Vancouver Canucks will never, ever be good if they don't start a rebuild. And I'm starting to think they're not going to be, a, I don't think they're ever going to win a cup in my lifetime. I don't think they're ever going to improve unless Francesco Aquilini realizes he needs to get a rebuild done. And I hope to God Bedard does not end up there. Or I hope, or sorry, I hope to, yeah, I hope to God Bedard does not end up a Vancouver Canuck because they will absolutely ruin him. Um, anyways, moving on, uh, Colorado, uh, Washington is, uh, really being a seller this deadline as they trade Lars Eller to the Colorado Avalanche for a 2025 second round pick. You know, I was going to do a video separately about the Capitals, but I don't think I'll have time. So I'll just say it now. I have to wonder what's going on through Ovechkin's mind. Like he's seeing a lot of his friends and teammates move and, I you know I totally get what Washington's doing, and I think they're being very smart about it. But it's it's tough to see uh, some of these guys that were on that Stanley Cup winning team go now. So I think Washington's going to be a bottom team next year. I really do. I think they have to do a rebuild, but at least with their owner Ted Leosis, um, I believe he's still the owner. I could be wrong. Um, at least he understands how the NHL works and how hockey works. So good trade. I think it's a good trade for both teams. I mean, I don't think Washington was going to get, excuse me, anything more than that. So, and Lars Eller gets to go to probably the, another playoff run with Colorado and maybe win another Stanley cup. Um, we'll see. Okay. So this was the trade last night. It got official early this morning and I still can't believe it when I see it. Jonathan Quick goes from the Los Angeles Kings, the only team he's ever played for, won two Stanley Cups with them, to the Columbus Blue Jackets for a 2023 first-round pick and a 2024 third-round pick. Um, I believe that 2023 first-round pick is conditional uh, as part of that the LA Kings sent to Columbus for Vladislav Gar... Uh, oh, God. Gary on... Or, Oh, God, I can't pronounce this guy's name. I heard it before, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Um, uh, Garakov or something like that. Big-time defenseman. And Jonas Corposalo. I just, I just don't think the LA Kings did the right thing here. I mean, I understand it. I know Quick has not had a great season. I know he's on the last year of his 10-year contract. I just... I don't know. He should have been. He should have retired to an LA King. However, from the, what I hear, I don't think Jonathan Quick will step foot on the ice in Columbus as a Blue Jacket. I think Columbus is going to do everything they can to trade him. Uh, I've heard Vegas could be a team that he heads to, which would make sense. Um, I really don't think Columbus will ever uh, have uh, Jonathan Quick in their nets as a goaltender. So, um, yeah, I just. Garakov, there, Vladislav Garakov, there we go, there, now I finally said it, Gar Vladislav Garakov and Jonas Korbasalo, that makes sense for LA, I get that, but, um, and rumors have been swirling for years for Jonas Korbasalo, so, and quite frankly, why would you want Jonathan Quick if you're Columbus, if you're trying to tank for Bedard anyways, I think Columbus deserves Bedard the most, I really do, they, I, I kind of hope that's where he ends up, but we will see. All right, four more trades, three more trades to talk about here. Uh, the San Jose Sharks acquire Vladislav Nemestikov, 50% salary retained from the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, for Mikey uh, Is Is Ismont or Ismont. You know, nothing really too major there. Um, San Jose obviously rebuilding. Uh, they get Nemestikov. Nemestikov, I believe, has been traded quite a bit in his career. So. Um, Maybe he's becoming the um, Dimit or I don't know if it was the Dmitry Kulikov that was always traded, you know, at the trade deadline for years or whatever. So uh, another trade: Vegas uh, acquires Teddy Bluger from the Pittsburgh Penguins for a 2024 four third round pick and defenseman Peter Delator. Dela I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. So little minor trade, nothing too crazy. And finally, the Nashville Predators trade uh, Mike Mikel Granlund to the Pittsburgh Penguins for a 2023 second-round pick. 
Um, I like what Nashville's doing. Um, David Poyle announced his retirement. We know Barry Trotz is coming in at the beginning of July. I think Nashville's going to go for a rebuild. They trade Ekholm to the Oilers. They trade, um, you know, Grandland to the to the Penguins. Some, they get they clear some cap space. They get rid of some long term contracts. Uh, I really think Barry Trotz is going to start building his own type of Nashville Predator team. And I really do think Nashville is another one of those teams that needs to do a rebuild. I really do believe that. Um, I wouldn't have signed Philip Forsberg, to be honest, uh, for that long of term and money that they did. But that's neither here nor there. So I'm just checking. Um, this is a very interesting tweet from Ryan Whitney. Dustin Brown got a statue and Jonathan Quick gets traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Woof. Yeah, that's, uh, that is definitely the truth. Um, I'm just trying to see if there is any more, uh, any more, uh, trades for today. I, I don't expect anything more now. It's 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, I expect obviously more to, to happen tomorrow plus, um, plus, um, you know, Friday, obviously with the deadline and we'll, we'll see what happens there, but just thought I would let you know about what NHL trades happen today. And, uh, we'll probably talk to you guys. Uh, the, probably I'll try and do it obviously a little earlier than this, uh, with me being off work tomorrow. I, Kind of want to get it done by 8 o'clock, uh, 8 o'clock uh, Alberta time. So anyways, this has been the Random Canuck. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.